What's up, Fortray Nation? Um, in this video, I'm going to go over the offseason for the Yankees, as well as give you my final grade for the team this year and for what they have done. So before I get into that, if you could hit that like, subscribe, and bell icon buttons, that would be greatly appreciated. It's extremely helpful for the channel. It gives me great feedback on what you think of the channel and the content, as well as I don't want you to miss out on a single thing because you will get the most up-to-date and accurate news here. So, um, I thank you all for it anyways. Also, I'm on the road to 500 subscribers and I greatly appreciate everyone who has subscribed. So, let us get into this video. So, the Yankees have made more moves than we've seen them make in the longest of times uh, for the offseason. All right? So, they've been quiet most offseasons where they've gotten a piece or two and then called it, uh, called it quits. This year was completely different. This year was a complete 180. They really rebuilt this team, and they really got it back to where it should be. So... I'm going to go over some of the moves that the Yankees have made, break them down, tell you why I like each move, and then I'm going to give you my final grade for the Yankees for this offseason. Let's get into it. So in November is really when everything kind of started for them. Uh, they made their first move. They uh, got a big arm, big pitcher from the Pittsburgh Pirates, and that was Yuri De Los Santos. Now, Yuri De Los Santos came from Pittsburgh, a uh, young pitcher, still has multiple years of control left. He is one of those guys that has high leverage stuff, has a very lively fastball with a very, very good breaking pitch. Um, Yuri De Los Santos, uh, I believe he was claimed off of waivers by the Yankees, by Pittsburgh, but regardless... It is a very nice add and a very nice depth piece for them, for that bullpen. It gives them another big arm and another good project for Matt Blake. But most of all, it gives us that arm to add to an already loaded bullpen. Because if you remember, last year's team, that bullpen was the second, either the best or the second best bullpen in baseball. Okay? So the Yankees' bullpen is a very, very very strong attribute for this team and a very strong suit for this team and a very strong piece to this roster. So Yuri De Los Santos really adds that piece to it that we needed. Um, I, it doesn't mean he's going to close. It doesn't mean he's going to be in a long relief or middle relief situation. But just having another big pitcher like that does come in handy. And I believe he is a left-handed pitcher. You can never have too much pitching, and they made other moves for pitching as well. So, this is a uh, this was the first of many moves to come. The next move that they made was they claimed Oscar Gonzalez, the young outfielder from the Cleveland Guardians. Um, they picked him up for some outfield depth in the event that they needed it. Uh, it's a nice move. He's still young. He's still got control of years, just like Yuri De Los Santos. He is going to be a nice fit for this roster. Uh, it's going to be a good minor league depth piece. Whether he comes up to the majors and plays in the major leagues with the Yankees is a whole different story. We have yet to see that yet and yet to see what he can do. So Yuri De Los Santos coming over from Cleveland gives us a depth piece in the outfield. Even though we have a ton of outfield already, it's a good problem to have because if he plays well, does get called up and plays well in the majors when he does get his time, they could potentially use that as a trade piece. So it's a nice move, and I really think that uh, it's going to be one of those moves that is very underrated, very underlooked, very calculated, very sneaky. So it's a good move, and I like it. The next is move that they made uh, is when the splashes start. So this one was a trade with the Red Sox. This happened to be the eighth trade in the history of both of these teams that they've made with each other. Okay, um, this one was for superstar outfielder Alex Verdugo. The Yankees sent uh, right-handed pitchers Nicholas Judas, 
Richard Fitz, and Greg Weissert to the Boston Red Sox for left-handed hitting outfielder Alex Verdugo. This is a very solid move for the Yankees. Um, yes, they gave up pitching, um, but it was the right move to make. Uh, as weird as that sounds to give up pitching for a left-handed bat like that, it was the right move to make. They got one of the left-handed bats that they needed. They were very right-handed heavy last year, so they got that left-handed bat, and it stretches out the lineup more and makes the lineup more deep, and it really increases uh, the struggle for opposing pitchers by getting Verdugo. He can slap the ball to all fields. He can drive it out of the park if he needs to. He doesn't just hit for power, but he hits doubles and singles, and that's what we needed. We needed more contact hitting, in which we got that out of Verdugo. So it's a nice piece to add. He is in a contract year, so that's something else to keep in mind. But uh, Verdugo getting picked up, great piece. The next move that we had was about 48 hours later when the Yankees acquired uh, two bats, actually, two left-handed bats in a trade uh, with San Diego, where we sent uh, catcher Kyle Higashioka, right-handed pitcher Johnny Brito, right-handed pitcher Randy Vasquez, right-handed pitcher, uh, pitcher Drew Thorpe, and right-handed pitcher Michael King to San Diego. And in return... We get a uh, three-time All-Star and World Series champ, uh, generational superstar, left-handed bat, 26-year-old uh, Juan Soto. And also in that deal, we also got another left-handed bat in outfielder Trent Grisham. It's a fantastic move. That is the money move of the offseason. Quite frankly, it's the move of the offseason. I don't care if it's a free agent move or a trade. That is the move. Um... Now, mind you, Soto is in a walk year, so he is going to be playing for a contract. But having Soto in this lineup with Trent Grisham not only makes that bench deeper, which is what we need. We needed a lot of depth on the bench, and we just got it with Trent Grisham because he will be a late-game defensive replacement. Uh, he is a gold-glove caliber center fielder. Uh, he's got speed, which is something else that we needed desperately. We... Uh, we relied on Volpe last year for, for speed and stolen bases, but Trent Grisham brings that to us this year. Uh, adding Juan Soto stretches that lineup and makes it even harder to pitch to us uh, for three reasons. One, he's a lefty and he's got a tailor-made swing for um, Yankee Stadium. Two, he has one of the best eyes in the major leagues for uh, strike zone recognition. And three and probably most importantly, gives Judge the protection that he needs in that lineup because last year Judge had zero protection. So that really stretches out the lineup even further. And with a healthy Giancarlo Stanton, which I believe he will be healthy because he came into camp slimmer, uh, a healthy DJ LeMahieu, Torres, a healthy Rizzo. I mean, it, the list goes on. So it's a fantastic move. Really like it. Um... I think that that trade really set the standard for the offseason. Um, and I also believe that that trade really set the Yankees in motion and set them up for success. So getting Juan Soto was a fantastic move, uh, along with getting Trent Grisham. A few days later, they, got, they made a trade with the Dodgers to help them out after they signed Shohei Otani to that massive contract in which... The Yankees traded shortstop prospect Trey Sweeney to L.A. And the Yankees, in return, got second baseman, third baseman, shortstop Jorbert Vivas and left-handed pitcher Victor Gonzalez. Now, this is a fantastic move for two reasons. One, you give that um, you give, give the team more infield depth. And I know we have a lot of infielders, and it's a nice problem to have, but this gives you more infield depth especially since Glaber Torres is in a walk year and Arias is not ready yet. And we don't know what Peraza is going to do or if they are going to trade him. So a nice piece there in Jorbert Vivas. Also, you've got uh, Victor Gonzalez, a big 28-year-old left-handed pitcher, both with a couple of years of control. Um, 
fantastic move. You not only added to your offense, but you added to the bullpen. And that is going to be huge. Victor Gonzalez has a wipeout breaking pitch with a fastball that is absolutely electric. It's going to be a nice, nice piece to have in that bullpen. So I'm very excited for it. And I can't wait to see them in action. Um, next, they uh, went out and got Marcus Stroman, um, a starting pitcher who pitched with the Mets, the Blue Jays, and the Cubs. This is a great move. It really warmed up to me, uh, especially since uh, Stroman has experience pitching in the AL East. And... He is a bulldog. He has been extremely healthy throughout his career, which is what we needed. We always needed healthy pitching, and he gives us that. He gives us that bulldog mentality. He's going to be a nice number three right behind Carlos Rodon. It'll take some of the pressure off of Rodon, but it'll also help Cole excel even more. And I have a real good feeling about this. It's a very team-friendly deal. It was two years for $18 million. Um with an option for a third to bring it to $55 million. Outstanding job by the Yankees on getting that starting pitcher in. They did it as a pivot from Blake Snell when he turned down the five, six-year, uh, $150 million contract offer by the Yankees. So they went out and got Marcus Stroman and added to that rotation. So fantastic move there. Then they had a couple of smaller signings where – they had in trades where they traded Esteban Floreal to Cleveland for Cody Morris. Uh, and then they later on in the offseason got uh, a pitcher by the name of Cody Poteet. These are great moves. They're small moves, not the sexiest names, not the sexiest moves, but great moves nonetheless. It gives the Yankees more depth. And both of them have controllable years, so the Yankees are getting guys with control of years that are going to be great depth pieces and Cashman is very well known for getting pieces like that and Clay Holmes is a prime example he was a high five ERA pitcher in Pittsburgh came over and now he's a sub three uh low to mid two ERA pitcher so moves like that really set the stage for uh setting you up for success it doesn't have to be the biggest names it doesn't have to be the the sexiest move but Nonetheless, it is a move that's going to help. Uh, then they also got Luke Weaver this offseason. Now, Luke Weaver is going to be a fantastic piece because he could be that second swing man uh, in the event that they decide to go out and trade for another pitcher or uh, sign Blake Snell, which I don't think is going to happen. Um, and at this point, even with it down to the Yankees and Angels, if that is what Jeff Passan is thinking, I still think uh, – I don't know if the Yankees are really going to be uh, – wanting Blake Snell. But Luke Weaver is a nice, nice, nice swingman piece. He can be a starter. He can be a reliever. He could be uh, the complement to Nestor Cortez that he could, that he needed. So nice move there. Another death piece. And the key word in all these moves are death pieces. Um, so we have to remember that. So then they went on to get Matt Gage from the Houston Astros, who was fantastic for them last year. Um, they ended up trading him later on to the Dodgers for Caleb Ferguson. Now, Caleb Ferguson uh, is a nice piece also. Um, he adds more depth to that, to that team, that rotation, or not rotation, to that bullpen, and it gives them a good arm to come out of the pen as a weapon if needed in late innings. Um, and they also finally signed, re-signed Lou Trevino um, right before spring. They're also going to get uh, Scott E. Frost back as well after his setback. They're going to have Lou Trevino this year. Um, so a lot of moving pieces, a lot of moving parts, a lot of depth pieces, which is good. Um, after Wandy Peralta and Kenyon Middleton left, uh, Peralta to San Diego, Middleton to St. Louis, all these depth pieces make up for losing those two. And it gives them nice compliments in the bullpen. And now they can just pick and choose who they want coming out of that bullpen. And that's a great problem to have. Especially when you can never have too much pitching. They got other moves that they made as well. But 
those were the key moves I feel um, when it comes to depth and um, and position players as well as well as pitching. Um, so for me, my final overall grade for the Yankees this offseason, being that they were the busiest team out of every team, and they plugged all the holes that they needed to, uh, I am giving them an A-. minus. I really think that uh, they did a fantastic job this offseason. They are not done. Brian Cashman and Hal have both confirmed the pencils are not down. They are still working to do what they can, whether it be a trade now or in the off season or in the trade deadline, excuse me, or whether they sign another piece. But you guys let me know what you think and what you think and what your final grade is for the Yankees this off season. I'd love to get into it with you guys. Please hit that like, subscribe and share buttons as well as that notification bell icon button. And until next time, have a great rest of your day. Let's get into this. Talk to you soon.